Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and it's Monday, let's see, what, July 6th? <laughs> I think um, things are going well here. Um, Cross-stitching-wise, I had a great week. I've, I'm really enjoying the July plans that I had set up, so, so far, so good. I could see it, sometimes it's hard to put a full coverage piece away after one day, but I have been enjoying it, and it's been fun to, it'll be fun, like a long spread out full coverage whip parade over the first 25 days in July, so that's fun. Um, so let's get started, shall we? I guess we have um, a little bit of June stitching. Oh, that was Empress Eugenie, so everything is full coverage, so here we go. All right, so I first, I got my May threads by Color and Cotton, and they were a little late in coming, but they're here. And I believe July's clubs got canceled because of, um, not July, June's. June's clubs got canceled because of um, inventory shortage, because of all the supplies that have been hard to come by, but it sounds like July's is back on. She's ready to go again for July. So these are nice. Like these are some good neutrals that'll be fun to put, put into things. So um, that was nice to receive those. My, the Lindy Stitches Stitch Along has a name now, it's called Onward Noble Steed. And I did this on Saturday. The, it came out on Friday and I got my part two done on Saturday. And there's one more part um, that'll release this Friday. This is a free stitch along by Lindy Stitches. And she says it's quirky. That's all we're allowed to know. <laughs> and I previously thought that maybe she was riding an ostrich. Onward Noble Steed continues to lead me to believe she's riding some sort of animal. But now I'm leaning more towards snail or slug. <laughs> so we shall see. Because I would think an ostrich would need a, a neck to come up here. So we shall see. So far, it's been fun. It's really quick. I, I think she said that um, part three will be a little bit more stitching. So that one might take a few more days to finish. But it's been, it's been a fun uh, bonus diversion. Especially since it is released on Friday. I usually have a little bit of extra stitching time on the weekends these days, so I've been able to get it done and I'm stitching most of it in Some extra little fancy flosses that I found in my stash. This is the one that's gonna be next time So that's another one that makes you think it might be a slug So we'll see <laughs> um, Let's see travel stitching I was I worked a little bit more on Bloomtopia's uh, border that will release on the 15th of July, so that's my goal to get it done by then. Um, not quite done yet, but I'm shooting for it. Hi, so it's now June 15th, and I'm here to share my progress on Bloomtopia. <clears throat> so right now, um, June, let's see. Part 10 came out today, and then this video I'm showing my finish of part 11 so that I can continue on with part 12, which is the border, which will come out on July 1st. So uh, this is a charity stitch along with a free pattern with a donation to Make-A-Wish. So you can still find this on the Fat Quarter Shop website. And here is mine now. So this is on 28 count Ivory Lugana 1 over 1 with my own colors. They're all hand dyed and they're all similar shades but a little cooler than the ones that were called for. So here's my, um, what do you call that? The quilt one I did before and this is this one. The number part 11. It's a little bushel of fruit which I thought was adorable. Um, I don't know if you can see it better if I'm not in it. <laughs> so I stitched the top sideways and then I stitched the rest of it up and down to try to let the variegation stand out. So this is all one color except for these little white ones right here. Everything else is one shade. A strong streak of dark in there. The variegation was a little bit um, strong. So I thought it looked kind of nice. It was a little like a little, one of those little baskets that you get berries in sometimes at farm stands and then they have a variety of colors in there of fruit. So super cute. So now I can go and start working on the border that goes around in multiple colors. So probably work one color at a time all the way around um, and just do, do it like that. So we'll see how it goes. 
um, what's easiest. Usually once the thread is on my needle, it's nice to just finish the color. And so we'll see, uh, we'll see how I tackle that. But that's exciting and it's looking really cute. I like how it's coming, coming together. It's almost done. So um, with that, I will let you watch the rest of the video. <laughs> Bye. And um, the print stitch club that I have kitted in this bag. Oh yeah, I did. Um, these, those are both by the Fat Quarter Shop. I cut up some squares. I'm going to do mine one over one on the 25 count that they gave me. Um, and that will be, I'm going to, I did five inch squares because I think it's going to leave me like an inch margin maybe. So not a whole lot, but my plan is to put them in a five inch frame with a four inch mat. Like I have from my Country Cottage Needleworks pieces, which I should have brought up to show you, but I didn't, sorry. They, so then I can pop them in like a picture and rotate them like that. So I prepped them like that right now ahead of time. So they're ready to go. And I am going to try to replace some of the stitches with specialty stitches every month, just, just to be fun. So the, the July one shipped today or yesterday, technically probably went out today cause there's no mail on Sundays, but, um, so whoever is in the prim stitch club will be getting their patterns soon, probably this week sometime. And then I think a little bit after that, they'll put them up on their website to be sold individually to whoever wants them. So, um, but those release once a month and they're those little squares once a month. So that shouldn't be too hard to keep up on. And the Bloomtopia should be done by then. The Lindy Stitches Sal should be done shortly. So I'll be able to free up some extra room in my random stitching schedule. <laughs> so I also have my temperature tree that's kind of bonus stitching. And this is in my shop. This is um, over halfway done now, which is really exciting. So here it is now. I was able to start on July's branch. That's one length, one yard length of thread. Um, I'm doing my trunk in the suggested, called for fancy floss option of Cocoa Bean by Week Style Works, Classic Color Works. One of those. I don't even remember. Yeah, I don't even have it down. Most of them, um, the best DMC for this, if you want to do DMC, is 839. I also have 3882. It's one of the newer colors, but it's hard to find. So 839 is the, is the nicest DMC. Um, or you can choose a fancy floss, like I did. Um, the kits come with 839, if you're wondering. So I finished July, uh, June's leaves and started in on July's leaves. And this week was kind of um, a swing in the temperatures. It started out with a 70 and ended in 94. So when I was getting the temperatures for this week, it looked like the rest of the month was predicted to be in the 90s. So we may have a whole branch of yellows and golds. So we shall see. Because so far it's been kind of unsure to make up its mind whether or not it really wanted to be summer which I'm okay with. It's been a nice, cool summer. But we set up the backyard inflatable pool this week for the kids. That was my daughter's request and they had a blast. It was so nice and they're all old enough and safe enough now that we don't have to sit out there with them. Um, so they just, it was nice to just let them go be silly outside in the water for like an hour and a half and not have to worry about them. <laughs> that was great. So, all right, so my stitching this week. I started out working on Empress Eugenie for the last two days in June, and then also worked on that for my first day of the Full Coverage Fanatics bingo challenge that's happening in July. Um, so I'll show that in just a second because it'll be all my Full Coverage pieces. I'm also doing Jolly July with the Advent Animals, which Jolly July is like a twist on Christmas in July stitching because Christmas in July is just anything Christmas in the month of July. And that's been around forever. Um, Priscilla and Chelsea, the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch, they coined the term Jolly July because they, at, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, they liked to start um, one ornament every day in July, I think. So it's kind of like a ornament mania or something. Um, so I kind of took a twist on that and for the first 25 days of July, I'm going to start a 
Advent Animal Brooks Books Advent Animals, and these are free on the Brooks Books website. So you can definitely go get them still. I'm doing one of those every day for the first 25 days in July, and then I'm also doing the July Bingo and Full Coverage Fanatics for the first 25 days. So the first 25 days in July are starting an ornament and I'm working on full coverage. So I have a little project and a big project. <laughs> so it's been kind of a nice a nice combo. So here, so far, I'm, I haven't gotten behind, so I'm excited about that. No guarantees that will continue to be the case throughout everything, but so far, it's going well. So here's the first one, Katie Kitty. And I decided to, um, I'm doing these on 18 count light blue Ada. And I am, I decided to color complete one color. So I'll pick a color that's near the top, either the, the top color or one of the top colors, and then color complete it. So if it's a color that's at the top and it's got a lot of stitching, I'll pick a different color. Cause I want something with like a medium amount of stitching, one to two threads at the most to finish it. And then I can have kind of a structure. I know which ornament this is if I, I'll keep them in, the, in order in my stack no matter what, but it's still nice to kind of, yes, I can kind of see, you know, this, that's this one. Otherwise, if it's just like a couple stitches, you wouldn't be able to tell what it was. So that's what I decided to do on all of these is to do, finish one color. So there's Katie Kitty. When I'm done with them, I again was gonna bring up a card and show you, but what I'm planning to do is I'm planning to mount these on cardstock and sew like a quarter inch around the edge of the design and then fray the rest of them. And so they'll be mounted on cardstock and hole punch the top and put them in a, in a, like I found a frame stand. I don't have it yet, but I, it's on my wish list. And it's a frame stand with some rings on top. And so I'll put them on the rings and then it'll be like a flip calendar for the advent season. So that's my plan for finishing these. So here's Peter Polar Bear on the second. I did the dark green on him too. He didn't have a lot of green, but um, green was the top color. So, <clears throat> oh yeah, that's the other thing I was gonna show you. Um, I guess I'll put them this way so they're... How I, I made a paper um, this is my needle minder and needle for the whole project, so I can just switch it back and forth. Um, I made a paper that's the size of my pieces, roughly, with the center marked and then the top corners marked on here. So that what I can do when I'm starting, I don't have to fold this paper, the, the fabric, and get creases on my fabric. Because I'm usually starting at the top anyways, so I usually poke it here in the center and find something off the center, but if somebody's over to the side, I can poke it near the side and count from there. Um, so I'll put my needle in there and then pull the paper off and my needle is right where I need it to be, which lines up with the center mark on the pattern. So that's what I, that's what I'm, how I'm finding the centers and everything. So that's made it really easy. The next one is Mary Mouse. I did the, the dark gray on this one. I could have done white because she has like a little white crown but then that would have involved like counting all the way down and doing all the white as well so I thought it'd be more fun to do the, the gray on her so she has her ears outlined and some some bits in her body so that's the start on Mary Mouse um, I don't remember how I Anyways, I'll figure it out later how I want these to be done. Here's Dapper Dog, Duncan Dog, and he looks dapper. <laughs> Duncan Dog. And um, I could have done the green and the counting would have been a little bit closer together, but <clears throat> I thought it'd be fun to do red since I haven't done any red yet. So I did the red and his little vest and a little bit in the bone. So that was nice. <clears throat> Got a little plaid vest going on. And the last one that I started yesterday was Hattie Hedgehog. And hers was light green. So I've done three different, four different colors on these five different ones. And so hers was the top, the teacup, the present, and, and the teapot. And then 
a little bit of the accent in her eyes is actually that light green color too. I almost didn't see that. So that's fun. So I'll share the next few. This week we'll be going through the 6th through the 12th before I'll likely film again. So we've got Cashmere Camel will be today. Pierre Penguin. And <clears throat> I'm, I'm unsure if I want to do him as charted or I just saw Goldfishy on Instagram. She made some changes so he's not drinking. His eyes look more cute. Um, so I'm not sure. I might do him that way. And then Pearly Pig on the 11th, on the 8th. Penny Kangaroo on the 9th. <clears throat> Sheila Sheep on the 10th. Pretty cute. <clears throat> and is this the next one? The right Fitzwilliam Frog on the 11th. Is that all of them? I forgot already. A little scatterbrained. Nope, one more. And Sophie Squirrel on the 12th. So those are cute. Looking forward to all of those. All right, got them all organized back in the bag the way I like them so that I am not struggling later. So there we go. Um, so now on to the full coverage fanatics bingo. This is this goes along with um, the full coverage fanatics Facebook group, and I plugged these all in in the rest of the month already. Um, so everything that has a slash has been plugged into a day and then if it's got crossed out then it's finished and I think I probably didn't cross out yesterday's yet but um this has been pretty fun so the first thing I worked on was Empress Eugenie and this one had a teeny 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 tiny little start where is it this big big old one I should show you what it looks like here's this one it's a golden kite and I'm doing this for the prompt trees because of all the trees that are back here. I am cropping the top two rows of trees, but I am still working here in the trees um, back here on the first page. I won't actually get to this girl for a while because I I'm cropping it to like here, so I still have like a whole a whole bunch of background before I actually get to anybody. So wah wah. But anyways, I got a much better start than I had before. I had like 10 stitches before. So this is on 28 count Monaco, two over one, half stitches. And here is my start. I mean, my three days progress. This is unwieldy. Here, I'll just let it unroll, I guess. So there's that compared to last time. And I don't know if you cover me up, if you can, <laughs> you can see it better. But um, there's several colors in here. And what I decided to do, which I've, I like to do with a lot of things now, is um, just kind of work across the top, filling in colors and finishing one strand of it and then going back to the top and picking another color. So this is like a swath of dark right here and then there's other colors around it so there was one or two colors that I stopped and, and put back on the bobbin because I um, didn't have anywhere else to put it I think it's this right here because I'm I'm like I'm over here so I think it's this part right here so not too exciting but it is a start Let's get this rolled back up. All right, so that was nice to get that one to a better starting point. Um, since when I restarted it last at the end of last year, I didn't get a whole lot done on it. So it's nice to actually have something done on that one. On the second, I had a new start for the bingo prompt less than 50 colors. And I started a Visit Endor Travel Poster by Country Magic Stitch on Etsy. Yeah. I guess she has a website too. This only has 11 colors, so it definitely counts. And it was really fast. Um, 
to get a lot of stitches. I am doing two over one half stitches on the same dove gray Monaco that I did the other one on. And this is my start. And I got to the other, I started over here and I did some of the trees and there's two colors in there. There's a little bit of an edge color that's slightly different. I'm debating. I want to trust them that it's going to show up. And then the um, sky, that's the word, the sky color. And then I did a little bit over here because I really wanted to reach the other corner. This is the entire width of the design. And I got to that on day one. Actually, this is this part right here was technically day two because I just couldn't not get there before I put it away. Um, the big blocks of color with half stitches goes really fast. So I got 200, oh, let's see, 630 half stitches on Visit Endor. So that's awesome. And on the one day of bingo, I got 264 half stitches on Empress Eugenie. Previous days were 235 and 160. And I'm not going to do all that math in my head right now, but decent progress on that one. Um, so pretty, pretty happy with that start. So and my son loves it. He loves that rich green because he, his favorite color is green. Um, but he doesn't like light greens. He prefers the more, the dark hunter greens. And so this was perfect. He's like, Ooh, yeah, I like that green. It's one of my favorite greens. So that's fun. I am using the, my green little, uh, whatever these are called, thread peels to keep it closed. Okay. Then I worked on end of the ball and this was for the bingo prompt. It was started with a vowel. So end of the ball starts with an E. So here's that compared to last time. And this one was on a, a busy day, so I knew I wouldn't get a whole lot of time. So I decided to, rather than mess around down here on, on the lady's head, which is starting down here, I just picked a couple colors right around here in the background and put those in so that I would see some progress, get some stitches counted um, in the short time that I had to work on this. So I got, this is two over one half stitches on 24 count Congress cloth. 226 half stitches and it was all right around here I'm pretty sure so there's that just in the background it's not too exciting but still some progress and pattern keeper really makes any of these projects even the background it, it makes them kind of fun because at the very least if it's a boring background section since it counts for you you like you know swipe your finger along to count the finished stitches it's fun to see how fast they are to you know, racking up, which keeps motivating you to keep stitching to do more, even though the actual content might, might be boring in that spot. So even boring stuff is kind of more interesting in that, with that program. So, and it is a program for Android devices. You can do a workaround for Kindle Fire. Um, and I would just Google, if you have a Kindle Fire or want to get a Kindle Fire for Pattern Keeper, you can Google on YouTube, um, download Google Play on Kindle Fire and include like Kindle Fire 7 or whatever version you have. And then it will tell you specifically which files you need and what order you need them to be downloaded onto your file Fire to make that happen. And once you have Kindle, Google Play Store working, then you can get Pattern Keeper. Um, anyways, I don't have a video on that, but I just looked for somebody else's video and found it. <clears throat> Um, then the 4th of July, I worked on waterfall in Yosemite because this is a national park and the 4th of July was our national holiday. So I figured that went together. This is for the full coverage fanatics bingo prompt landscape. That's pretty appropriate. I figured, um, so here's it in all its glory. This is the mini version and here is mine and here I'll do this um, up and down because I did just work in this uh, sky a few a few rows here in the sky <clears throat> I did a little bit down here and then some of this in here not as much on this got done 
Um, <clears throat> this is 18 count full crosses. So you have the full cross factor making it slightly slower. And it was a very busy day. Um, well, not really, but anyways. I got 153 full, full crosses on this one. I kind of wish I had been able to get more, but I was doing other, other stuff. So it's something and I'm happy with that. And again, looking forward to getting that top row finished at some point this year. I have more, I left another needle on my thread ready to go for next time. <clears throat> There's another color in here that's got a lot of stitches. And so I was gearing up to do more of that um, to get more numbers on my stitch count for that day, but I didn't get, it didn't get to do very much on that. The next, the last one I did this week was yesterday I worked on grapes and that's for the bingo prompt sweet treats because fruit is a sweet treat. It doesn't have to be candy or cupcakes, it can be fruit. Grapes and peaches and raspberries are all sweet treats in my opinion. So um, I worked on this one and this one I was excited to see. I think I was guessing before what I had seen in Powder Keeper, but I am at 40 point something percent done with this one, almost 41%, which is pretty cool. So let's get these out of the way. I had a lot of fun working on this this time. So here it is next to last time, if you can tell. There's still a lot of parked threads in the way, but I, um, I managed to find a way to tackle this that's enjoyable for me. Because I was, I kind of want all of these gone, but just working on the parked threads is not that fun. Because especially a lot of this is confetti. So I'd pick up a parked thread and realize there's only one stitch of that color. And then it's like somewhere else. And so the section where it came from isn't really seeing any progress, noticeably so. And um, and I don't want to just stitch it and put it back because a lot of them are blends and that's just kind of more annoying. So what I ended up doing is what I'm doing on a lot of the other ones where I'm just kind of finding symbols all along the top row of what I haven't stitched yet, which was mostly over here. So that included ones that were not parked. So I was able to get this, these, these rows filled in a little bit more and some of this background filled in, which gave me a few more numbers. Um, which is really nice. So I am actually really enjoying this now. This is off my naughty list. So I won't get rid of these quite as fast doing it this way, but it makes it more enjoyable. So there's little bits everywhere. There's more down here. There's a little bit in here. There's this big green chunk, some of the background, more down here, more in here, pretty much everywhere <laughs> has, has new things going on. So <clears throat> almost at 41% of that one. This is also on 18 count Ada. This is oatmeal Ada, which I thought was a nice rustic color to go with the, the theme. One of my oldest whips, as you can tell by the progress. And this was also, I've mentioned before, but it was also my travel piece. Um, when my son was doing flag football and my daughter did a ballet class, I remember, I have memories of both of those things taking that with me along with my, I had one box of regular DMC floss box filled with all the colors and I took that with me <clears throat> and would stitch on that during the practices and stuff. So I got a lot of progress done parking method, doing it that way on, on various vacations and at flag football practice. And so that's probably why it's as far along as it is, but <clears throat> I'm getting back into the groove with it. So that's a good thing. So going forward this week, I have as you already saw, the next um, seven Advent Animals, I'll get started one color on each of those. <clears throat> and then I am going to have six more full coverage pieces. One of them I'll, I have for two prompts. And I have everything plugged in. So this week I'm going to do one that is two prompts. Next week I'll do one with two prompts. And then the last week I have two that are for two prompts. <clears throat> the Full Coverage Fanatics Around the World style this year, this month is India, and I'm doing both of mine to go with the color yellow. So the first one <clears throat> I'm doing this week, today, is one that works for the color yellow. So whatever I get today, I will post it in bingo and in the monthly string. <clears throat> and this is La Soiree by Golden Kite. 
and I'm doing it because the background is yellow wallpaper back here. And I went into Enchanted Stitching was a little bit the Enchanted Stitching Challenges group on Facebook, which I also like to participate in a lot of times. Um, <clears throat> wasn't doing much um, pro last week because it was a split split month week. <clears throat> but this week they're back at it. The the movie for July is National Treasure to go along with the Fourth of July holiday in America. <clears throat> so I decided to look at the prompts just to see if any of the things I was going to work on would fit. And I was able to make them all fit, but I chose the next tier down. Normally I like to try for the 250 stitch goal, which is 250 stitches full cross or 500 half cross. And I can't get that much in one day on most days. There's some days that are exceptions that I can get it in one day. A lot of times that's just too much. And I don't want the pressure of it being my goal. So what I decided is to just shoot for the middle goal, which is the night tier, 100 stitches or 200 half stitches. And that's a little more reasonable for a one day goal. This one works for something with shoes because you can see some of their shoes poking out underneath their dresses here. So I'll work on this for bingo for something that starts with an L. You need to just, that, that prompt was something that starts with a J, U, L, or Y for the month of July. This starts with L, La Soiree, and it's yellow for, for around the world in India, and it's got shoes for enchanted stitching. So this works for three prompts. <laughs> Gotta remember to post my pictures on all three of those. This is another one, like End of the Ball, that's on 24 count Congress cloth. And here is my start on that one. And I, so far, have been doing this in columns with parking in future columns. So I don't know that I've done this. I, I have not, I have not done this in Pattern Keeper yet. I think I still need to adjust it. A lot of the Golden Kite, um, the Golden Kite patterns, when you import them into Pattern Keeper, you need, for one thing, you need their password protected version. So if it's a really old copy, you need to get a new copy of your pattern, which I have done on all of my old copies. Um, and all the new ones you buy are compatible. But um, the, what do you, what am I trying to say? Oh yeah, there's so many blends that for some reason Pattern Keeper has a hard time importing the blends that have the four digit numbers at the beginning. They do fine with the ones with the three digit numbers at the beginning and they're all DMC, you know. So what I'll find in the, in the key is I'll find multiple symbols with 3021 or something. And I'll need to go through my chart and make sure that one of them is probably just 3021, but the other three are 3021 and something else. And the other one is 302 and something else, because those are the blends. So I need to go in and manually update the symbol key on this one, and then I can get this going. And I didn't realize I hadn't done that yet until just now. So I'm gonna, I was supposed to work on this today. But because I have to do that, maybe I'll, I'll, I might switch it around and do that today so that I can, it, I was trying to pick one that I could work on very easily on the day I have to edit because it takes a little bit of time to do that, but we'll see. I may still do it today. Um, and then the next one I have down is Stitcher's Retreat, which was a free one on the Hade website, no longer up there. Um, but I got this back when it was free and I am cropping two rows off the top two rows off the bottom, two rows off the far side, and one row, one column off that side, so mine will end up being a landscape one right in the middle. Just the fun stuff. This version, um, the Hade version, is very dark, and so a lot of, I've seen people's progress on the, their top is very, lots and lots of browns. It doesn't look as, as blue and light as this picture does, um, so I figured I'll just focus on these guys that's the fun part anyways. Save myself a lot of time. And I'm doing, I was starting to do this one extreme cross country, one color at a time. I had a, a chunk that I had to rip out, which makes this work for the enchanted stitching prompt of something you've had to frog, <clears throat> which you can see. I used the same fabric. So this is the chunk that I frogged from last time. So that works for enchanted stitching also. Um, and I'll, my goal then will be 200 half stitches on this. So I have the 
dark color done in both ladies heads and then one time I came in and worked on her dress for green so I'm not sure what I'll work on this time maybe I'll work some more in in her head I think in the the last time I think I wanted to put in the the lamp to try to have something in the middle to count off of so maybe I'll actually try that we'll see <laughs> we'll see what I get to this is on rose monaco two over one half stitches 28 count and so that works for that one for enchanted stitching and the bingo oh for the bingo what is this one for bingo gotta tell you why I chose these things stitching retreat a designer or design name beginning with S or T and this actually has both stitchers no it doesn't have a T just kidding there's lots of T's in it. It begins with the S, ends with the T. Stitcher's Retreat. There we go. <laughs> so it starts with an S. So that's why I chose it for the bingo. <clears throat> the next one is the Young Gardener, which I chose for bingo to be something with a geometric shape. A circle, square, triangle, etc. So for this one, this is the Young Gardener. It's an art of stitching pattern. And I chose this because the bottom of her um, watering can is a nice oval and the can itself is like a cylinder. So I thought that was as geometric as I was going to get in a lot of these. So I chose that for that one. Bingo. And it also works for um, enchanted stitching. I think it was something that you're passionate about. And so I said, I'm passionate about my family because this one reminds me of me and my daughter, the mom and a little girl. So this is on 40 count, vertle, even weave, one over one, half stitches. And I have my dark floss here on the needle still. It looks like it's probably black. So there's my, there's where I'm at right now. Um, and I have, I started in the corner and then I ended up finding her hat of the mom. And so I worked on that. So since I have some, String on my needle, I'll work, work on that um, first, see where I go with that. And then we'll see, I'll get at least 200 half stitches on this for enchanted stitching. So most of these, I think, I think that medium goal should be pretty easy to do for most of these. And then I have April Fairy. That one I was working on because of fairies. The bingo prompt was fairy. So I did my April fairy. You can hardly see her wings, but they're down here. She's there with a bunch of butterflies and I'm up here in her hair still. So just hair right now, but she is a fairy. It's even in the name. <laughs> and this is one I am doing more of a meticulous stitch by stitch style, which I realized even with Pattern Keeper, I'm still enjoying this method of stitching. So I'm gonna keep it up. And here is where I'm at now. This is on, again, 28 count Rose Monaco. One over one full crosses this time. And hopefully I can maybe finish that column. That might be a good goal for one day. There's a lot of, a lot of confetti down there, as you can see. Um, so, but we'll see. That's, that's my starting point. Up in her hair. And then the next two days, I'll be working on one project, Mini Bird Song, which is by Tatiana Fedrova. It's a Heaven and Earth Designs. And I have a larger printout because that picture was just too small for me. So I printed out a larger one. Um, I'm doing the mini. Um, so I'm already, I've already finished most of this sky. So I'm just about to start on this bird, which is kind of fun. But I'm doing this for a bingo prompt for birds and a bingo prompt for insects because there's some bees down here too. So I'm pretty sure those are the two that I chose for that one. Yeah, birds and insects and bugs. So it's got both. This is another one on 40 count. Vertle, one over one, full crosses. Oh, I'm not quite to the bird, but I have a lot of that blue done. I have this morning glory finished and I'm here in the greenery 
with a bunch of parked threads. And I think the bird is like over here. Yeah, its beak is very, very close here. But I'll probably work on this stuff and see if I can get 200 half stitches in this. So this is, this is pretty fun. This uh, one over one on 40 count um, is similar to what I did my um, Anne of Green Gables on, on the silk gauze, only this is fabric, so it's a lot easier to see the stitches. So I do like this quite a bit. I'm probably going to start my um, bear time stories for my son on on this 40 count also because he likes I think he would he seemed to like the idea of it being small and tiny as well so I might do that for his which I'll start next week I think I wanted to kind of space out my new starts a little bit and then the last one which I'll probably work on on Sunday is Oh, and that one I think is the one I'll do for full coverage for Enchanted Stitching, which I could go for the royal goal on that one since I'm doing it for two days and try to get 500 half stitches. So we'll see on that one. No no pressure. Um, for something that has blood in it, so it was saying an animal or a person and the birds have, have blood. So that one works for that. So the last one is Flower Garden, which is also Heaven and Earth Designs, Pumiel Vernon, and this is in my on my bingo card for Stitcher's Choice. I was waiting to see what I couldn't easily fit into some other spot, and that's the last one I had, so it went it went on Stitcher's Choice. It would work for a few different things, but I had other projects that would only work for some of those things. So um, some things that this just happened to be the one that was left. So this is also 28 count Rose Monaco 2 over 1 half stitches. This is another one that I don't think I've done in Pattern Keeper yet, so it is still here with my columns and parking. So <clears throat> probably look a little bit different with some more of these filled in when I come back. It's pretty dense here in the background because it's pretty heavy confetti um, in the back with all of the flowers and bits up in here. So it'll be a little while before I get to her on this one also. So that's my plans for this week. Should be pretty fun. <laughs> I'm enjoying this so far. Um, it's kind of fun to like start to have the day have a completely new set of things. I don't know. It's not necessarily what I want to keep doing all the time, but it is fun to do a little bit. And I have Arbitrary August pretty much ready to go. Um, I filled out my four different Tiny Decisions wheels for four different size categories for all my projects. And I noticed that I have, most of my projects are in the large category. I have a few um, extra large, over 100,000 stitches, and then a handful of them that are like less than 10,000 most of them are in between in so all my categories are very evenly divided so there'll be some in some categories that are like that's not a medium sized project but i wanted to have for from on my scale of projects different sizes available so i have 15 15 15 16 or 17 17 or how many projects are in each in each wheel so my largest project wheel has 17 projects in it, which means 62 projects. I think there's only 61 actually, so maybe it's only 16 on the last wheel because there's one project that I didn't put on the wheel because I'm planning to start it um, in August, the Stitcher's Heirloom Stitching Sampler by Victoria Sampler. I'll start on National Cross Stitch Day, which is in August. So that week I will not spin the wheel for whatever category that would have been in and only spin the wheel for the other three. So it's the one non or arbitrary thing I will be doing in August. Um, but every other week I will spin one one project from each category to work on that week. And I'll hopefully be able to plug them into Enchanted Stitching Challenges and get my 250 slash 500 stitch goal done on that. So that's kind of my plan for August. My one caveat is I put them all on my phone, which is what I'm using to film. So I might have to film using my camera or something to 
film the, the spinning part and then do some thinking off camera to figure out what prompts I'm gonna do and then come on on camera to share my plans. So that's kind of what I'm thinking I'll do. Rather than having to redo my wheel on another device so that I can film it right now, right here, that's that's probably what I'll do. It'd probably be easiest. So anyways, it's not August yet. It's <laughs> July's just started. So anyways, keep um, having fun with your stitching. So far, I'm having fun with mine. Um, we decided to make our bedtime just a little bit later because we're not having to get up as early these days with no commute, and no school and none of that. So um, that helps for making a little bit more, like a half hour more stitching time every night, which is definitely helping with the way these projects, I have like several projects to do every day right now. So that is definitely a bonus and able to get all of this stuff done. So with that, I will leave you and love you and hopefully see you next week. Happy stitching. Bye.